Woo! WrestleManiac, aka Blu-ray Maniac, aka Scream Factory Maniac, a little We are here. Now hit he, listen, let me just break this down you for you guys and gals. This is my complete or my entire Scream Factory collection as of May 14th, May 15th, because it won't be uploaded till tomorrow, 2016. I'm about halfway into completing the entire collection. I've got over a hundred titles. It'll say it in the in the description. But um, we're gonna get into it. Now, it's going to look a little different to you probably because the situation is I filmed this entire collection. It was in six parts, okay? Somehow the first two parts, A through H, got deleted. Somehow when I was transferring from my phone to my computer. So I'm reshooting this first part from A to G, to G actually. So if you see where it's like it's nighttime now and it's going to be daytime and then later in the end of the video it's going to be nighttime again. Just so you know, it's it, I had to reshoot this part. But nevertheless, we're going to bring it to y'all, and, and it's going to happen, okay? There are so many, so many titles. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get right into it. I'm trying to find the best way to do this. And I think I found it, so... Starting off the collection, we've got Alien Outpost. Um, this takes place in 2021. And um, looks like good cheese. I haven't watched it yet. It is a um, alien film, so it'll be fun. Check that out. There's the alternate artwork. And you crack it open, and you got the uh, discard inside there. Uh, got this at CD Warehouse for... Six dollars, something like that. Eight dollars. <clears throat> Excuse me. You get um, audio commentary with the director, as well as interviews with the cast and crew, deleted scenes, and a theatrical trailer. That is Alien Outpost. Look forward to checking that out. Like I said, I haven't checked it out yet, but um, look forward to doing so. Next up is the Amityville Horror Trilogy, which is an awesome, awesome set there. You get that awesome cardboard sleeve here for it. And then you get the individual Amorays. You've got Amityville Horror Part 1. For God's sakes, get out. Um, this was from 1979. And then you get that awesome artwork inside with the photos and poster art from the old movie. Um, you get an audio commentary with, the, uh, with Dr. Hans Holzer, who's a PhD and has a PhD in parapsychology. You get For God's Sakes, Get Out, the documentary with stars James Brolin and Margot Kidder. You get a theatrical trailer, and you get radio spots. Um, this one I've seen. I haven't seen the other two yet. So, um, Also, too, you're going to notice as a theme for this video, there's a lot of these I haven't watched yet because I bought so many so quickly. Um, but we're going to get that We're going to get that taken care of. Um, next up is Amityville 2, The Possession. Great artwork there on that one. Um, you also get... The back there, back art, where I can get some spine. There's the spine. Um, and then there's that disc art for you. Crack that disc out of there. And then you got all kinds of photos and stuff. Um, Screen Factory always does everything so good. Um, you've got an interview with Dami, uh, Damiano Domini. What? Uh, <laughs> you get interviews with the actors, uh, Andrew Prine, Diane Franklin, and. Uh, and others. You get audio commentary with the author um, of the book, and you get a trailer. This is from 1982, and that is Amityville, Amity, Amityville 2, The Possession. Sorry. Last but not well, last but least, you get Amityville 3D, which I heard is god awful. Um, that cover's pretty great, though. This is from 1983. There's no special features on this, but a trailer. You get that disc art there, and then you get some shots from the movie. Um, so I'm really glad I got this trilogy. It ended up running me about $40. Um, so there's that. That's the Amityville Horror Trilogy. Heard it may be going out of print, too. I, I don't know you know, I don't know the truth to that or not, but I heard there's going to be a few screen factories that are going to be going out of print this summer. So hopefully I'll have all the ones. I'm pretty sure that I do. 
Next up, we've got the Army of Darkness. Good old Bruce Campbell cheese fest right here. Haven't watched all three discs. I've watched the theatrical version. Um, there's three cuts of this film. There's the slip, and then there's the awesome artwork there for you. You crack this open, and you got disc one, which is the theatrical version. You got disc two, which is the director's cut, and then you've got disc three, which is the international cut and the television cut. So three different versions of this film, um, which is just cool as heck. Uh, disc one, you get uh, Medieval Times, which is a making of Army of Darkness featurette. It's a feature-length documentary with Bruce Campbell. Um, Ted Ramey, you got Bill Mosley in there, you get Patricia Tallman, you get an original opening and ending, you get deleted scenes, the trailer, TV spots, disc two with the director's cut, you get a commentary with the director, Sam Ramey, Bruce Campbell, and Ivan Ramey, you get creating the Deadites featurette, you get a behind the scenes footage, um, vintage making of featurette, and you get extended interviews. And then disc three, the international cut, you actually get a scan of the inner positive uh, cut of the film, you get the television version, which is just in standard definition. You get theatrical trailer and you get steel galleries. This is from 19... ...92, sorry, couldn't find it. That is Army of Darkness, definitely recommend that one. Next up, we've got a John Carpenter classic right here. You've got Assault on Precinct 13, such a great movie. You get that awesome artwork there. Um, and you get the, uh, the you know the original artwork there and cool disc art. Now, if some of this stuff when you're watching this video in entirety, if you can make it through it, it's going to be a long video. Some of the stuff I say later may not match up um, to what I referred to earlier because this is I'm having to reshoot this first clip. So hopefully it won't throw the video off too much. But I just know I can't shoot the video all over again. I definitely can't do that. So. Assault on Precinct 13, this is from 1976, um, John Carpenter, like I said, you get an interview with the actress Nancy Loomis, and the art director, sound effects director Tommy Lee Wallace, you get that awesome commentary with Carpenter, you get interviews with Carpenter and Austin Stoker, you get a trailer and you get radio spots, definitely recommend this one, that is Assault on Precinct 13. Next up we've got a movie that everybody just thought was horrifying. And scare the crap out of them. I enjoyed this movie, but I didn't love it. And that was the Babadook, 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 however you want to say it. This is the special edition. This is an IFC Midnight and uh, Scream Factory collab. You get that alternate artwork. And then you open the disc up and you get even more alternate artwork there. Which is pretty cool. Now, don't get me wrong. This movie, this movie has some scary spots in it. And I enjoyed this movie. But I didn't... People were saying it was just so terrifying that when I went into it, I was expecting such a scary film, and I didn't feel that way, but I still enjoyed it. You get deleted scenes, you get the cast and crew interviews, you get a behind-the-scenes featurette, you get Jennifer Kent's short film Monster, who she is the director of this film, and you get theatrical trailers. And you get this awesome pop-up slipcover, which is always cool to check out. That is the Babadook. Getting through these a little faster than I did the first time around. <laughs> Here's one that I can't recommend enough. It says it's a must-see. It does for the woods what Jaws did for the ocean, and i got to agree with them. And it is based on a true story, and that is Backcountry. Um, awesome, awesome movie. Here's the slip. And there's this alternate oop, alternate artwork, and then there's the disc art. The story basically is about this couple that's been together for a while. They're going camping in the woods. guy's taking his, his, uh, his wife out there because he's got a surprise for her when he takes her out there to see this, this really special like waterfall. It's out in the middle of the woods, which he's been out there several times, but along the way they run into a psychopath. They also run into this thing, um, this, this killer bear, which is terrifying to me, like that situation they were in. Great movie. Um, got a commentary with the writer-director, Adam McDonald, and actress Missy Peregrim uh, and Jeff Roop, and you get a behind-the-scenes featurette, as, long as, as well as a tra trailer and a gallery. Definitely recommend this one if you like creature films. That's Backcountry. Next up, we get a good double feature. The first one of the bunch here, we get Bad Dreams and Visiting Hours. God dang it, Kramer. Um, you get Bad Dreams and Visiting Hours here. Bad Dreams is great. Haven't seen Visiting Hours. So I need to, need to uh, check that one out. Bad Dreams was 1988, and Visiting Hours was 1982. Um, and then on the, on the double features, of course, you get this standard Scream Factory 
um, artwork and then you get that cool poster art from the movies um, which is always cool so uh, with bad dreams you get commentary with the writer director interviews with the actors and actresses as well as the director and special effects and all that stuff um, behind the scenes featurette original ending and a theatrical trailer and with visiting hours you just get an interview with the, with Brian Taggart who's the screenwriter and then you get radio and TV spots so definitely recommend this one especially for bad dreams it was really cool next up is a zombie film that uh, I enjoyed not gonna lie There we go. A uh, zombie movie that I really enjoyed, and that was The Battery. Um, this was from 2013, and it's got a really cool take. It's like a post-apocalyptic movie. There's the alternate artwork on the disc, and then even more alternate artwork on the inside there. Um, it's got an audio commentary, outtake reel, featurette on the music of The Battery, the making of The Battery, which is 90 minutes long. I need to check that out. And the theatrical trailer. I thought this was done really well. It was shot well. Um, the two guys that was in it, just two guys in it the whole time pretty much. They did really well also. So I recommend it. A lot, some people didn't like it, but I enjoyed it. And that is the battery. And keep in mind too, guys, as you see me reviewing all these, well, talking about all these, I'm very biased to Scream and Shout Factory. So I'm getting them all good, bad, ugly, and otherwise. So there's going to be some in here that y'all are like, why is he getting this? It's because I'm getting them all eventually. Trying to be like, you're just trying to Pokemon them, okay? Then we got The Beast Within, which this movie, the parts where the werewolf stuff was happening was really cool. The rest of the movie was really boring to me, but uh, that that one scene, the transformation scene at the end that was banned everywhere, is such a long, painful scene to watch. Uh, 1981, you're going to see that theme throughout the video. So many dope, awesome movies came from 81. We've I already did a video about that before. But this movie gives you a commentary with the director, Felipe Mora. You also get a commentary with the writer, Tom Holland, and the actor, Paul Clemens, as well as a theatrical trailer. You get this alternate artwork on the inside there, too. Um, but Beast Within, it's good. If you like werewolf films, it's good. It's not great, but uh, yeah. Next up, we've got another John Carpenter, Body Bags. Now, I owned this one and sold it and regretted it about three or four months later when I watched it again on TV. Um, this is a great movie. Like, it, I love the first story. It's a horror anthology. Um, my favorite one is the first one about the gas station. I wish that was a feature, the whole film. Um, but Carpenter, you know, it's just an anthology film. You got four stories in here. Um, you get this really cool slip cover that's embossed. Luckily, I was so lucky to when I ordered it back off BestBuy.com and I got the slip back because that would have been a bummer. And then um, you got the Blu-ray DVD combo back when they were doing that. I don't really guess they're doing anymore. Um, this is from 1993, and you get a lot of features on this one as well. You get an audio commentary with Carpenter and Robert Carradine on the gas station segment. You get a commentary with uh, the director Carpenter and Stacy Keach and Hair uh, segment. You get a commentary with the producer Sandy King and Justin Beam and I, and then you get an unzipping body bags featurette with John Carpenter, Sandy King, Stacy Keach, and Robert Carradine. So and a trailer. So really, really cool set. Hopefully they're going to keep... I'm going to say this several times throughout the video, but I don't care. The Thing needs to be released on Scream Factory, as well as Big Trouble in Little China. Come on now. Come on. Next up, we've got The Boy. Now, this is not the one that just came out about the doll. This is a totally different one, starring David Morris and Rain Wilson. This is a Chiller Films and Scream Factory collaboration. Um, so, yeah, this is... Um, it's a really good movie. This is also uh, Elijah Wood has got a film com a production company now. He's one of the ones that helped put this together. Um, really messed up movie. It kind of reminds me of The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin back in the day. The kid and his his dad runs a, a motel in the middle of nowhere, and nobody ever shows up to it. It's just him and his dad there, and he goes out and kills animals and all kinds of stuff. He's just a messed up little kid, and the. Rain Wilson's character wrecks his car and has to stay there for a while. Stuff starts going crazy, and then it just gets worse as the movie goes on. But I love it. It's basically just a character piece about this kid. But I enjoyed it. And you get behind-the-scenes footage. And in the interviews, they were talking to the actors and the directors and stuff. And they didn't even shoot that in America, which I thought was crazy because it looks like it was somewhere out in like the Northwest or something. Um, but they did a really good job with that movie. Check that one out. That's The Boy. Next is one of my favorites. If I had a... 
if I had a way to tell you, if I had five titles, I said, hey, you need to start your Scream Factory with these five. This would be one of the five, and that is The Burning. Absolutely love it. Can't wait for the other fellas to get this. Um, and, uh, you know, the Blue Limit Soldiers can get this, and um, we can watch this. Speaking of Blue Limit Soldiers, let me just talk about that for a second. Blue Limit Soldiers is, is happening, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a group of, of we're all good buddies and we're all Bluetooth, Bluetooth channelers, channelers. Uh, you know what I mean? It's myself, visual expression, Blu-ray outlaw, Friday the 14th and Blu-ray Dan. Um, just expect some cool stuff coming from us here in the, here in the future. Blue limit for life. Blue day blue. It's the call for the collective. I'm just telling y'all now, prepare yourselves for the blue limit soldiers. Nice little shameless plug. Anyway, anyway, we do a lot of movie nights um, on Google Hangouts. And we don't stream them live or anything. We just, you know, hang out and watch movies. I can't wait till we watch this one. I freaking love it. 1981, one of the year, the year of the greatest horror movies. I'm telling you. Audio commentary with the director, Tony Malum, and the international journalist, Alan Jones. You get Blood and Fire Memories featurette. You get a trailer and more. There's that amazing slip cover. Um, when I got this originally, I bought this movie new for $10 at McKay's, but it didn't have the slip a couple years ago. So I've had that one without the slip for the longest. Well, I ordered one off bestbuy.com thinking maybe I'll get a slip for it, and I did. So I sold mine to Tony for 10 bucks, and then he ended up finding a slip. So it worked out for us. But there's that alternate artwork there. And then there's the Blu-ray DVD combo pack. And then, of course, you get the alternate artwork as well. And that is The Burning. Such an amazing movie. Again, one of my top five releases from Scream Factory. Woo! Next up, we have The Car, 1977 film. Haven't got a chance to watch this one yet. Heard great things about it. Outlaw recommended it, so I know it's going to be one I'll enjoy. There's the alternate artwork inside there. Just a, a scene from the film, looks like. That disc art. Um, you got interviews with the director, Elliot Silverstein, and actors, Melody Thomas Scott and Geraldine Keems. You get a trailer, TV spot, radio spot, still gallery. Look forward to checking this out. That's The Car. That would have been a cool poster to get. I think they had some posters for that one, too. Next up is Cat People. Um, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this or not. I'm just trying to get them all, and I need. I wanted to get this before it was hard to find that slip. Um, this is um, Nastasha Kinski and uh, Malcolm McDowell. Uh, this is from 1982. There's that awesome slip cover and the alternate artwork there. We're going to try to do this with all of them. And you get even more alternate artwork when you open it up on the disc. Um, just a, a really cool looking release. You get interviews with the writer director Paul Schrader, Nastasha Kinski, Malcolm McDowell, John Hurd, Annette O'Toole, and composer Giorgio Marauder. You get a trailer and a still gallery with it. So hopefully I'll enjoy it, but if not, you know, that's just part of it. I can't love them all. That's cat people. I know it's just a love or hate thing from what I've heard. Next up, we've got a double feature that looks somewhat like so much fun. I haven't watched it yet. That is Cellar Dweller and Catacombs. Um, Cellar Dwellers from 87, Catacombs from 88. Um, on, on Catacombs, you get a commentary with the director, David Schmoller. Um, but here's the classic Scream Factory double feature art. And then there's the poster art there on the inside. Look at that Look at that creature out there. It looks crazy. Look forward to checking these out. And that's Cellar Dweller and Catacombs. Keeping it moving, baby. We've got the 2000 film Cherry Falls. Brittany Murphy, Michael Bain, Gabriel Mann, and Jay Moore. Haven't watched this one yet either. I've seen it a long time ago. When I was in high school, I saw it. But I couldn't, I couldn't tell you anything about it now. Um, you get that really cool artwork. It looks so, so cool. And then you get the disc art. And then just a scene from the movie. I'm uh, really glad they're putting out some of these movies from the late 90s, early 2000s on screen. You get a commentary with the director, Jeffrey Wright. You get interviews with the writer and actress. Um... Uh, Actors, producers, all that good stuff. You get vintage interviews with Brittany Murphy, which that's cool. Rest in peace. Um, behind the scenes footage, an original script and a trailer. And that is Cherry Falls. Powering through it, baby. Here is one that I really love. It's not a horror movie. I would say it's considered to me like a, um, ah, a 
thriller, action thriller maybe. Um, but I loved it. It's directed by Mark Lester, and that is The Class of 1984. Sorry, this is... Whoa. By the way, Blue Limit Soldiers, all those links are going to be in the, in the description box. Viz, Blu-ray Outlaw, Friday the 14th, Dan, and Visual Maniacs. Even though we haven't made a channel video in two years, subscribe anyway. We may make one one day. Who knows? Class of 1984. Here we go. There's that awesome slip. Sorry, I'm getting delusional. It's uh, it's getting late. I'm just trying to power through this video for you guys. That awesome, awesome alternate artwork there. Look at that. Super cool. There's the back. And then you get even better artwork on the disc. They just go all out. That's why Scream Factory is my favorite ever. Uh, this is from 1982. And you get Michael J. Fox before he even had the J in there. It was just Michael Fox. One of his first... I don't know if it was his first movie, but I heard it was one of his first. You get an HD transfer of the film from the inner positive, um, which looks amazing. You get interviews with the director, Mark Lester, as well as actors, Lisa Langlo, uh, Langlo and Aaron Noble, and the composer of the film. You get commentary with Mark Lester. Blood and Blackboards, feature, it's a featurette with interviews with the director and crew. Trailer, TV spot, still gallery. Another one I really recommend, guys. That's class of 1984. Check it out. Super cool movie. Here's one that I haven't seen. I got it for $5 on BestBuy.com, and it came with the slipcover. That is Cockneys vs. Zombies. Not sure why this is so cheap. It's a Scream Factory release. Um, you get two commentaries, a behind-the-scenes featurette, and the digital copy, which I used. Um, and there's that same artwork on the inside, but you get really cool artwork on the inside, though. Look at this. There's disc art, and there's that cool shot from the movie, I guess. This looks like good fun, like a Zomcom. Um... Look forward to checking it out. And this is from 19 or 2012, sorry. That is Cockneys vs. Zombies. Next up, we've got Crawl Space. This one looks like a lot of fun. Um, the, the, the artwork here on the cover is amazing, first of all. And then you open it up, and then you get that really cool disc art. And then you get this super creepy alternate artwork, which I'm not using that. That's a little too creepy to use. Um, this is from 1986. You get a commentary with the writer-director David Schmoller and an interview with makeup effects artist John Bulick. You get a short film by David Schmoller entitled Please Kill Mr. Kinski. And then you get a theatrical trailer. Really look forward to checking this one out. I got this for like 11 bucks on BestBuy.com. Continuing on, we've got another two-pack that I just loved. And it was Curse and Curse 2. Curse was awesome. Curse 2, not so much, but it was it had its parts. It has nothing to do with the first one, by the way. Curse takes place in Tennessee, actually. And it's basically, it's from 1987. Curse 2 is from 89. Curse 1, basically, the plot of the movie. There's a meteor that comes down from space and lands in this on this farm where this family lives. And it contaminates the water, and they start drinking and turning like into creatures. It's really funny, but it's it's it's. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun watch. Curse Two was just about a snake. It's about a snake biting people the whole movie, which is not. It's okay. I mean, they shouldn't have called it the Curse Two. They should have just called it something else. But either way, it, it was a good double feature. And I'm glad to have it. And that's the Curse and Curse Two. Next up, we've got a cheese fest that is just screaming Gouda, and that is Dark Angel starring Dolph Lundgren, aka I Come in Peace. You get this alternate artwork on the inside that, sh for some reason, it was called that, and they changed it to Dark Angel. I'm not sure why. Um, it's from 1990. You get an interview with the director, Craig Baxley, and the actors Dolph Lundgren and Brian Benben, and you get a theatrical trailer. You can't go wrong with Dolph Lundgren. Any kind of action flick, Lundgren's got to be up there for you if you're an action film fan. And he's up there for me, and that's Dark Angel. Next up, we've got... Dark Man, um, which I picked up at McKay's for ten bucks, sealed with the slip about two years ago. Still haven't watched it. Heard I heard this is like a, a mixed thing. I mean, it, it get mixed reviews on that. Really cool artwork there on the inside. Then you open it up, and then it's got same disc art. Um, there's tons of features on this. I need to check this one out. This is good old Liam Neeson, and you've got um, uh, Larry Drake as well. Rest in peace. 
Um, you get interviews with Francis, Francis McDormand. You get a commentary with the director of photography. That will be just fine, which is an interview with Larry Drake. You get Durant's Man, which is interviews with the other actors in the film. Dark Man's Design, production interview, production designer interview. Um, man, there's so many. Face of Revenge, an interview with the special makeup creator. You get storyboards, trailers, TV spots, e uh, electronic press kits, cast profiles. Just It goes on and on. Uh, this is from 1990 as well, and that is Dark Man. Look forward to checking that one out. And another one that's in my top five of must-owns to start your collection, and that is George A. Romero's Day of the Dead. That is just pure amazing artwork. One of top three favorite artworks, for sure. Um, just love this movie. I like this movie better than Dawn of the Dead by, uh, by a landslide. There's that alternate artwork there. I love Dawn of the Dead, the original. But I just think this one's a lot better. There's Day of the Dead. There's that. There's there's Bub there. Uh, just absolutely love this movie. So much fun. 1985. Um, you get uh, HD transfer of the film, which looks amazing. You get a documentary, The World's End, Legacy of the Day of the Dead, which is really, really cool. All these features are awesome on this one. You get commentary with the writer-director, George Romero, which is, is great. Um, you get behind-the-scenes footage with Tom Savini. You get photo galleries, trailers, TV spots, all that good stuff. That is Day of the Dead, a must, must have. That was scary. I almost dropped them off. Moving along, we've got Deadly Blessing, another Wes Craven one. Um, well, I, one of the Wes Craven ones, sorry. Um, got Ernest Borgnine in it. You got Michael Berryman. You got Sharon Stone. And that slipcover is boss. That is a boss-ass slipcover. And then there's the alternate artwork there on the inside. Open it up, and you've got the same thing on the disc there. Uh, really fun movie. Got a really twisty ending there. Uh, 1981, of course. You get commentary with the director, Wes Craven, which it's always great to have him do commentaries, as well as the Carpenter when he does his. You get an interview with the actress, Susan Buckner. Writers Glenn Benst and Matthew Barr. You get TV spots and you get a trailer. Um, yeah, so check this one out. This is another one that's good. It's weird and it's got one of those weird sleep, I don't know, like sleeper endings kind of thing, but I enjoyed it. Next is another one that I've always been a fan of. When we were little, we used to have this recorded on VHS from like HBO at my grandmother's house. and We used to watch it all the time, me and my sister and my brother. And that is Death Becomes Her with Bruce Willis, Meryl Streep, and Goldie Hawn, directed by Robert Zemeckis that brought you back to the future. Um, just such a funny movie. It's, it's just one of those, I mean, it's not really a horror film. I guess part of it could be considered that, like, but it's just a comedy, as you can see that there. Um, there's the alternate artwork there, really cool. And then the disc art. And um, this has got some cool features on it. This is from 1992. You get a making of uh, making of Death Becomes Her, featuring interviews with Robert Zemeckis, David Kopp. You get uh, director of photography, production designer, uh, special effects artist. You get a vintage making of featurette. You get a photo gallery, and you get a trailer. But that new making of featurette is really cool. Uh, I didn't watch the movie yet. I just watched that because I've seen this movie several times. But really recommend this. It's just it's just a good, funny, ridiculous movie. But that's Death Becomes Her. Next up, we've got Death Valley, starring good old Peter Billingsley, a.k.a. Ralphie from Christmas Story. Haven't got a chance to check this one out yet. Um, this is also a combo de doodah there for you with that in interior artwork with just pictures from the film. And um, just looks like a, a, a cool watch. You get a commentary with the director, Dickie Richards. You get a trailer and you get a TV spot. It's going to be cool seeing Peter Billingsley do this kind of movie instead of a comedy. That's Death Valley. That's one of the first ones Screen Factory put out, too. Next up is a Chiller Films and uh, Screen Factory collab, and you get uh, Deep in the Darkness, starring Sean Patrick Thomas. Um, I enjoyed this one. Nobody ever talks about it, and when I do get here talking about it, people are dogging it. Um, but I loved it. I, I, well, I don't want to say I loved it. I liked it. Basically, Sean Patrick Thomas, moved, him and his family move into this town. He's like a doctor. They move into this town, and the town's really weird acting. And um, he starts noticing that the town is kind of weird, like culty. 
Um, they're all in on something, and he don't know what it is. He starts seeing stuff, and the town starts basically turning against him. And uh, just look at that. Super creepy. Um, you get, this is from 2014. You get that really cool alternate artwork as well. I got that as a, sc it was a screener that somebody had returned at, uh, at uh, McKay's, and I bought it at McKay's. So that's Deep in the Darkness. No special features on it, it looks like, but. It's cool. It's a good watch. Then you get a double feature. Now, I love this first movie. I haven't watched the second one. That is Destroyer and Edge of Sanity. This is an Anthony Perkins two-pack. Destroyer was great. It's kind of reminded me of Shocker. You got Lyle Alzado right there, um, which is really cool. And then you get um, that standard Screen Factory double feature CDR or disc art. And then you get vintage photos and posters from the films. Um... Neither, no special features on them, but I really look forward to checking these out. 80, Destroyer was in 88, and Edge of Sanity was 89. So, look forward to checking out Edge of Sanity. But Destroyer's great. So, I recommend that one as well. Next up, we've got one from 1998, and that is Disturbing Behavior. With James Marsden, Katie Holmes, and Nick Stahl. Um, this one, I haven't seen since about that time, since I was in high school. Um, you get a commentary with the director, David Nutter, and you get deleted scenes and an alternate ending. doesn't look like anything else was added to it. It was just a way for them to release it, which that's fine with me. <clears throat> as long as some of this stuff gets releases, you know, that's all that matters to me. Look forward to revisiting this. That is Disturbing Behavior. Next up, we've got a movie that I really enjoyed. The slipcover's amazing. The artwork's amazing. But the Blu-ray transfer is terrible. That is Dog Soldiers. This artwork is incredible. That slip, that newly commissioned artwork, and then there's that really creepy original art. You open it up, and you get discard on the Blu-ray and DVD. But I don't know what it is that some they they've dropped the ball so bad on that Blu-ray transfer. I guess it was maybe the best they could do, but it was so bad. You're better off watching the DVD of it. Kramer doesn't like it either. Um, this is from the year 2002. You get commentary with the director Neil Marshall. You get making of Dog Soldiers featuring interviews with so many different people um, actors and crew you get the trailer you get a short film called combat from neil marshall you get a still gallery you get um trailer and all that cool stuff so the movie's great but the blu-ray transfer is bad i'm just warning you now um, you're better off just watching the dvd of it that's dog soldiers next up we've got one that i really enjoyed parts of krampus reminded me of this movie and that is dolls um, this is from 1987, which is another great year for horror films. You're going to notice that in this, in this, uh, collection video. There's that creepy, creepy artwork that scared the heck out of me as a kid at the VHS store. When I would go and rent video games and old movies, wrestling tapes. I'd go to the horror section and see all that stuff and just be scared. You get a commentary with the director, Stuart Gordon, and writer Ed Naha. You get a commentary with the actors and actresses. You get Toys of Terror, which was a making of featurette, which is very extensive and really good. You get storyboard to film comparison. You get a trailer and you get TV spots. So really recommend this one. Dolls is, is really good watch. It's a fun time. So check that one out. Next is The Editor, which has an amazing slip cover with it. Haven't watched it yet, but it looks great. Jordan said it was really weird, which I can't wait to check it out. I love weird. 2015. You get a commentary, making of, featurette, documentary, uh, and deleted scenes, a trailer, and all that. And then you get the disc art, um, DVD, and Blu ray combo de doo dah there. That is the editor. Look forward to checking that one out. And I'll be right back, guys. My video of Max is about to stop. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Continuing on, we've got another John Carpenter classic, and that is Escape from New York. 1981. Oh, shit. Oh, Kurt Russell there killing it on the cover. And then there's the old classic Escape from New York artwork. And then you get two blue rizzles. You get a Blu-ray with the feature film and a Blu-ray with just the bonus features. That's how hard they went in the paint with this one. Absolutely love this release. Just an amazing movie. Um, disc one is the 2K scan of the inner positive of the film. Struck from the original negative of the film. You get a commentary with actress Adrian Barbeau. And director of photography, Dean Cundy. You get an audio commentary with Carpenter and Kurt Russell that's amazing. That was on the old DVD, I think. 
You get a commentary with the producer, Deborah Hill, and production designer, Joe Alves. And then disc two, you get the bonus features. You get a, a look at the special visual effects with interviews with the cast and crew. You get interview with the still photographer. Um, deleted scene, the original bank robbery opening sequence is deleted. It's like an alternate version. You get a return to Escape from New York featurette, trailers, galleries, and more. Such an amazing release. Definitely recommend this. You know, Carpenter is my second favorite director ever. You got Scorsese, and you got Carpenter, and you got Tarantino with me. So, love this one. That's Escape from New York. Next up is a very weird one, I must say. It's a weird one. But I enjoyed it for what it was. And that is Clint Howard in Evil Speak. Um, his computer makes him do evil shit. And it's so funny. In 1981, too, by the way. And then you get that awesome. And this is cool because, whoa, you get, like, different posters for, like, the movie in different countries, which is cool. Um, I enjoyed this one. It's a very weird film. Very dark. But it was cool, man. I, I liked it. It's from 1981, like I said. You get a 1080 transfer. The film looks great. Transfer looks great. You get a commentary with the producer-director, producer, Eric Weston. You get interviews with the cast members, including Clint Howard, which is cool. Um, and you get a theatrical trailer. So this is one that nobody ever talks about. But I loved it. And that was uh, Evil Speak. Next up, we've got one that me and Outlaw like. Nobody ever talks about it. Very straight to the point. No no big deal going across the board here with this one. That is Final Exam. Um, 1981. I'm telling you. That was the year. They just kind of was lazy with this release. I'm not going to lie, Scream Factory. You kind of were. They didn't even give interior artwork with this one. Um, this has got an HD transfer of the original camera negative, which it, it looked good on Blu-ray. You had a commentary with the cast members. You get interviews with the cast members, and you get a trailer. It's straight ahead. I mean, it's straightforward. No big plot. There's a there's a, there's a college of kids, and there's a guy that starts killing those kids. That's that's all you need to know. That's all there is to it. No rhyme or reason, but good slasher film. You don't need a lot of big backstory. It's just a slasher film. That's final exam. Next up is one from 1983, and that is a Blu-ray DVD combo pack of the Final Terror, um, which I enjoyed. You get that disc art there on the DVD, Blu-ray combo de doo da there, baby. And then you don't get alternate artwork, but you do get shots from the movie. Which is always fun times. This is basically just about this, this group of uh, young people that um, are out camping and people start dying. And they don't know what the hell's doing it. Um, you get interviews with the actors, Adrian Zmed and Lewis Smith. Post-production supervisor, <clears throat> excuse me. Alan Holzman and composer Susan Justin. You get a commentary with the director, Andrew Davis, and you get a trailer. This also has um, Daryl Hannah, Adrian Zmed, who played in Bachelor Party, and then you got um, Mark Metcalf, who played in Zero Dark Thirty. You've got Lewis Smith, who played in Django. you got Joe, Joey Pants, Joe Pantoliano, played in The Matrix and The Fugitive. Um, and also Andrew Davis is the guy that directed The Fugitive and Under Siege. So... It's a good watch. It's nothing great or anything, but it's good. That's Final Terror. Continuing on, another Carpenter classic and one of my favorite Scream Factory releases, and that is The Fog. I didn't have the slipcover for this one. I bought another copy on BestBuy.com. I gave my old copy to my buddy Skeggs. Bought this one. It came with a slipcover. I don't know how. Outlaw found me a slip because we thought it wouldn't come with one. And then it, he sent it to me. I had a slip, and then it came with a slip. So I gave it to my buddy Tony. Um, so, love this movie. So awesome. 1980, Jamie Lee Curtis. You know, of course, she did this and uh, Terror Train in the same year. There's that awesome alternate artwork there. I'm so excited whenever I get a, a, a Carpenter um, Scream Factory release because I know it's going to be done right. And this one has so many features. I've watched them all. You get a great transfer of the film, 1080, film, uh, you know, HD transfer. You get a commentary with the writer, director, Carpenter, and Deborah Hill. And you get a commentary with the actors, Adrian Barbeau, Tom Atkins, Tommy Lee Wallace. You get that really cool interview with Jamie Lee Curtis. Tales from the Mist, which is Inside the Fog featurette. You get a Fear, uh, fear on Film Inside the Fog featurette. You get a Storyboard to Film featurette. You get the Horrors, Hallowed Grounds. They go back and look at some of the old locations. You get outtakes, trailers, TV spots, photo gallery. All the way ham. Definitely recommend this one. That is The Fog. 
Next up is from A Whisper to a Scream. This is a film by Jeff Burr. Um, 1987. It takes place in Tennessee, too, which is cool. It's like a horror anthology. And um, it used to be called The Offspring, too. Again, one of those that changed titles for whatever reason. Um, but it's pretty good, man. It's nothing great, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. You get a commentary with Jeff Burr. You get a commentary with the producer as well. Um, you get a decade under the innocence, a feature-length documentary about Super 8 filmmaking during the 1970s in, in Georgia. Uh, featuring the director, Jeff Burr. You get a Return to Old Field, which is a comprehensive feature documentary about the making of the film. They went all out on the features. Like, these documentaries are, like, feature length, like, an hour and a half long. You get a still gallery, a foreign tra uh, theatrical trailer, and TV spots. If you like anthology films, definitely give this a check out. And that's from A Whisper to a Scream or The Offspring. Next up, we've got H.P. Lovecraft's From Beyond which could be considered a somewhat sequel to um, Reanimator. This slipcover is freaking amazing. The movie's so weird, but I loved it. It just gets so ridiculous once they start, like, making this creature. Like, it's just... I mean, look at it. That's what the guy starts looking like, the, reg the regular guy. There's the uh, discard on the Blu-ray DVD combo there. You get a young Ken Forhey, the gentleman that's always in the Rob Zombie films, is in this. You get a commentary with the director, student, uh, Stuart Gordon, and the cast. You get interviews with Barbara Crampton, the director's retrospective featurette, uh, the editing room lost and found featurette. You get an interview with the composer, photo gallery, storyboard to film comparisons, trailers. It's from 1986, and that is From Beyond. Definitely give it a watch, too. If you like Reanimator and Bride of Reanimator, you'll enjoy that one. Next is one that is so fun to me, and it's a proper name. It's The Fun House. Um, Toby Hooper, guy that brought you Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1981. Imagine that. Um, this movie is so much fun. These kids go to a carnival, and all hell breaks loose. Look at that awesome artwork there. Crack it open there, and then you got that disc art. I really enjoy it. Um, the slip covers became pretty hard to find. I know the Viz is looking for the Funhouse slip, so if anybody's got one, let us know. We can get him one of those slip covers. We can do it. He, I'm sure he'd trade with you or something if he still doesn't have it. We get a commentary with Toby Hooper. Um, you get an interview with the executive producer, Mark Lester. You get an interview with uh, William Finley, who was one of the actors in the film. You get trailers and TV spots. Recommend this one as well. Fun stuff. Toby Hooper's great. That's Funhouse. All right, continuing on, we've got Ghost Town, which I haven't watched yet. I got this at um, uh, Hastings for like $15 with some store credit. This is from 1988. There's no special features. It's got that really cool inner uh, disc art, and that, that's the artwork that's originally on it. I just like the old school one better. Or I don't know, but I'm guessing that's the older one. Ghost Town. It just looks like some good fun. Next up, we have an amazing two-pack. You know, us, the Blue Limit Soldiers, we've been doing some, some movie nights, like I was saying earlier, and we've started watching the Critters films, which we freaking love them. None of us had seen them. We got that four-pack, and we've watched one and two and just fell in love with them. Well, I've been telling them they need to get this one, and that is Ghoulies 1 and Ghoulies 2. I know that they're going to love them if they love the Critters movies because these are great. Um, just a great double feature. My second favorite double feature to um, the one I'll show you later on in the video. And then you get that cool artwork. They just look like such cool guys. Look at them. Kind of like a gremlin. It's just kind of like gremlins or any of that stuff. Ghoulies 1 was 85 and Ghoulies 2 was 1987. And they got, they got some good features on them as well. They get commentary with the director and co-writer. Interviews with those same people. As well as the composer of the film, special effects artist. You get a trailer. That's for Ghoulies 1. In Ghoulies 2, you get an interview with the executive producer, as well as some of the actors. You get some deleted scenes, and you get a trailer. So as far as two-packs, you like creature features, and you like like horror comedies, this is what you need to get to. It's Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2. They come out of the freaking toilet kill you. It's terrifying to me. And uh, next up, we've got Ginger Snaps. Werewolf film that I haven't seen since I was in high school. This came out in the year 2000. Really cool slipcover. A lot of people don't like this one, but I remember enjoying it when I was a when I was in school. I haven't seen it since then. I haven't watched it since, but 
really really cool disc there um, and that cool you know different artwork and there's there's tons of special features on this one too they went all out on this one um, you get interviews with the actors Emily Perkins and Jesse Moss as well as makeup effects artist Paul Jones the composer Mike Shields you get women in horror panel discussion ginger snaps which is cool you get a commentary with the director John Fawcett a commentary with the writer Karen Wilson you get deleted scenes with optional commentary by those two people cast auditions rehearsals creating the beast um, the theatrical trailer TV spots just another ton of stuff that uh, the, yeah there's that there's ginger snaps so now I think this is that was the reshoot of that first part so the next clip will be back where we need to be it, it just th threw me off I'm so sorry if it seems kind of out of place but it's the only way we could get it done guys I love you keep keep watching keep watching all right we're back it's been a while not for y'all it was just a quick clip but it's been about two hours since before I had to let the phone charge, I had to run some errands. But we're back. And we left off with Ginger Snaps. So here we are with the next one. And that is the Hallow. Um, have not picked this, or I'm not, have not checked this one out yet. It looks amazing. It's an IFC Midnight Scream Factory collabo once again. Got that awesome slip cover. This is actually in store. I got this at Best Buy. There's that alternate artwork there. And then you open it up, and then it's got the discard from the slip cover. Um, looks like a cool creature feature, you know, which I, again, like I said earlier, I'm a fan of. This is from 2015. You're going to have Surviving the Fairy Tale. It's a making of documentary. You got a director storyboard segment. You got Book of Invasions, which is uh, original illustrations uh, for the film. You get director sketchbook. You get Corin Hardy's original concept sketches and creature concepts. So look forward to checking this out. Looks like really a really fun time. Looks really creepy, and that's the Hallow. Now, we are here with the big boy. And that is the 15-disc Halloween Complete Collection, the Deluxe Edition. One of my favorite pieces in my collection, obviously. Um, you get that awesome artwork there, and then you get the, there's, there's Michael there. And you get all the films, and there's the back telling you everything that's on them. Um, you've got, of course, Halloween. Well, I can show you. You've got, of course, Halloween, Halloween 2, Halloween 3. Now, let me check. I'll just go we'll just break them down individually. Might as well. We're going all out on this one, right? First off, you got the original Halloween. One of the, the best horror movies of all time, uh, obviously. Um, now this one comes with um, audio commentary with uh, co writer, director John Carpenter, and Jamie Lee Curtis, of course. Got a new audio commentary with the director of photography and the cast, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace, a couple others. The Night She Came Home featurette, On Location, 25 Years Later featurette, TV version footage, theatrical trailer, TV spots. And on disc two, you got another commentary with the, with Carpenter, Jamie Lee Curtis, Deborah Hill. You get a Halloween Cut Above the Rest featurette, theatrical trailer, and TV radio spots. And these black cases are really awesome. Um, and then, of course, there's the there's the disc art. Now, granted, these came from Anchor Bay. Okay, so a lot of them did. So there's going to be some of that that was ported over. Now, this is interesting here. This is Halloween 2. Now, I originally bought Halloween 2 and Halloween 3 individually before this set came out. When I got this box set, I took the slip covers from those that I bought previously and kept them and put them on these and then just sold the other ones on eBay. Um, and then artwork. This is one of the first, this may be the first Scream Factory that was released. Um, amazing artwork there on the front and then there's the spine to it you take that off and then of course this is the one that came with the box set Halloween 2 that awesome artwork there and um, this is also have the television version as well of Halloween 2 um, this one's got commentary with the director Rick Rosenthal and the actor Leo Rossi in the theatrical version and commentary with the stunt coordinator, Dick Warlock, in the theatrical version. You get the theatrical version and television cut with the added footage not seen in the theatrical version, obviously. You get a Nightmare Isn't Over making of Halloween 2 featuring interviews with the cast and crew. You get the Horrors, uh, Horrors Hollowed Grounds revisiting the original shooting locations, which that's, I love that Horrors Hollowed Ground stuff. 
deleted scenes with optional commentary, an alternate ending with optional commentary, still gallery, much, much more. Halloween 2, amazing, amazing movie as well. And glad I kept those slips because those are probably really hard to find because they're the first, two of the first Scream Factories that they came out with. And here's Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Gets a lot of hate, but I love it. Just don't, just go into it knowing it's nothing to do with Michael Myers, obviously. But as far as a standalone film, if it would have just been called Season of the Witch, it wouldn't have gotten near, near the hate that it gets. But that artwork's amazing. I heard that sticker's rare, who knows. And there's the back there. And then we take the slip off. And then you've got this awesome old school artwork there from Halloween 3. And there's the disc art. Special features on this one is an audio commentary with the writer-director Tommy Lee Wallace. You get a standalone making of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch featuring Tommy Lee Wallace, Tom Atkins, and more. You get Horrors Hollow Grounds revisiting the locations. Still gallery theatrical trailers. Um, this is from 1982. Halloween 2, I believe, was... 81? 81. And then Halloween 1, I believe, was 78. Yeah. Sorry, I had to go back tracking. That's Halloween 3, another great one. And then we're just going to go through this here. You got Halloween 4, uh, The Return of Michael Myers. And then there's that there. And then you get, I had the one that was the, had the messed up disc. So I had to contact Anchor Bay. They sent me the new one. Something about the, the tracking or something wasn't lining up. So special features on this one is audio commentary with the actors, Eddie, uh, Ely Cornell and Daniel Harris. You get a commentary with the director, Dwight Little, theatrical trailer. That's Halloween 4, uh, The Return of Michael Myers. And then, of course, you get Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers, of course, also starring Daniel Harris. There's the art for that. This one's got commentary with uh, Don Shanks, the, uh, actor Don Shanks, and Justin Beam. You get a commentary with Dominique. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the rest of that. Daniel Harris and Moore. Halloween 5 on the set, and then original promo and trailer for 5. Then you get Halloween Curse of Michael Myers. Now, I've only seen this once. I haven't watched it since I got it on blue. It gets either love or hate. There's either a love or hate for it. Now, this has got two versions. You've got the producer's cut, and you've got the theatrical cut. Okay? So that's going to be interesting visiting those. you got commentary with the screenwriter. Um, Jamie's story, an interview with the original Jamie, actress Daniel Harris. You get the curse interview, I mean, tons of interviews, retrospectives, full interview with the composer, cast and crew tribute to Donald Pleasance, archive interviews with the cast and crew, alternate scenes, just a lot of features on this one. So that's the Halloween 6, Curse of, uh, curse of Michael Myers, sorry. Then we've got H2O. I like this one okay, nothing, uh, nothing major about it. I don't really like it too much. It's okay. Oh, sorry. Let me, let's see. 95 was part six. Um, it's like 1993, maybe? I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna move on. This is from 1998. You got commentary with the director Steve Miner and Jamie Lee Curtis. You got a making of H2O featuring tons of interviews with the cast and crew and then vintage interviews. So that's H2O. And by far the worst one, Halloween Resurrection. This movie's terrible. So bad. Not even going to really get into this one too much. Just, uh, it's just bad. 2002, you get a commentary with the director, Rick Rosenthal, alternate scenes, a featurette, um, and more. But uh, that's definitely one I, I can't recommend. Now we get to the interesting ones, the Rob Zombie ones, which I'm a fan, big fan of Rob Zombie films. Love this Halloween remake. Um, that artwork is incredible. Sorry about that. I got a phone call. It happens. Halloween, Rob Zombie remake. Huge, huge fan. A lot of people don't like these. Um, I, however, love them. This is from 2007. This is the... Unrated director's cut. Um, you get that awesome artwork there. And then you get the two disc with the artwork on those. 
This has got director's cut audio commentary with writer director Rob Zombie. You get deleted scenes with optional commentary with him, as well as an alternate ending. You get a bloopers. You get um, featurette making of reimagining Halloween, meet the cast and crew. And then on disc two, you get that epic four and a half hour documentary, Michael Lives the Making of Halloween. Rob Zombie's version is he's much more brutal um, and terrifying to me. I, I love this movie. I do. Um, so, yeah, it's Halloween, the Rob Zombie remake. Now, this is one everybody and their mom hates. I don't hate it. I just don't. I just don't get some of the things he tried to do. But this is Halloween too. Sounds and looks amazing. Um, from two thousand and nine, you got the commentary with writer director Z Rob Zombie. You get deleted and alternate scenes, at audition footage, um, blooper reel, Captain Clegg and the Night Creatures music videos. Uncle Seymour Coffin's stand-up routines. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's people hate it. The whole white horse, I get it. I think he just tried to do something. I, I get where he was going, but it just didn't work. But uh, that's Halloween 2. I enjoyed it. Okay, it was okay. Now then, but you get this extra disc, the complete collection bonus disc. That's the big boy disc for this set, okay? And on that, you get so much stuff. You get... Um, Let's see. I'm not sure what all is on that. I just know that there's tons of stuff on it. It doesn't really specify, I don't believe. Yeah, it doesn't specify exactly what all is on it. So, huge monster of a set. Absolutely recommend this if you're a horror fan. That is the Halloween Complete Collection there. Now we're going to move it on along here. Chiggy, 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 chiggy. All right. Harvest. Um, you got Michael Shannon and Samantha Morton. Watch this the other night. This is a fucked up movie, okay? Basically, all I'm going to say is it's called Harvest. Um, think of that what you will. Um, basically, in the first film in nearly 15 years, the director of Henry, um, it's basically Mary Ann moves in with her grandparents after she's orphaned. Okay, there's a, chick, a little girl that moves in with her grandparents, like they said. Or, um, she's, moved, she's new, she doesn't have any friends. Desperately lonely, she looks out to set to, to befriend a deathly ill, bedridden boy. Um, despite the outright disapproval from his mother, who's weird as hell. She's weird as fuck in this movie. Um, Marianne's persistence pays off. However, during the series of secret visits, he gradually uncovers some seriously sinister goings on in the house. Um, these are, they're fucked up people, basically. Let's just we'll just leave it at that. I enjoyed it. It's a really messed up movie, but it's 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 good. It's a good thriller. Um, and there's the there's the slip. You also get the alternate artwork there with the disc art, like always. This is a IFC Midnight and Scream Factory collab. Doesn't say that there's any special features on it. Um, so that's Harvest. Next up is another one that I watched. This one was pretty good. Um, really creepy, actually, and that is Hellions. It's got terrible reviews. I'm not really sure why I got terrible ones. It's an IFC Midnight Scream Factory release from 2015. Um, it's also, it's got Robert Patrick, who you know him from T2. Um, also, he was in Gangster Squad, I believe. And you've also got Chloe Rose. It's just about some trick-or-treaters um, that show up at, the, at her house. She's pregnant, and um, they're by herself. Her mom's gone, um, and they torment her badly. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was pretty creepy. And there's the cool slip and that really cool alternate artwork there with the disc art. And that is Hellions. Again, those two, Harvest and Hellions. I picked both those up at Hastings. Now, this one, I actually didn't show in my last update because when I, if y'all if y'all watched my last collection update, you heard one fell on the floor. It was this one. And that is Hashtag Horror. Um, I've got in the H's instead of in the very beginning. I don't want this to start my Screen Factory collection. So I just put it in the, in the horror in the H section. This has got Chloe Savini and Timothy Hutton. Haven't watched this yet. I started to, and then we ended up doing a live stream. I watched something else. Um, it's got one star on Netflix. I'm sure it's pretty bad. But, you know, I'm trying to get them all. And that's just what you got to do. Here's the artwork on the disc and the alternate artwork. I got this at McKay's for $10 used, 
which is the cheapest you're going to find it. So that's hashtag horror. I'm not even going to show it in my next update. It'll just be in this. Now, another amazing release, and that is the Howling Collector's Edition with that awesome slip cover and that newly commissioned artwork. Guess what year this was in? 1981, ladies and gents. I'm telling you, that was the year. You got that alter, uh, alter, 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 awesome alternate artwork. God, said that 10 times fast. Um, this is a uh, cool disc art there. And then, of course, the commissioned artwork on the inside like we always see. And this one's chocked full of stuff. I mean, you've got commentary with the director, Joe Dante, and actors D. Wallace, Christopher Stone, and Richard Picard, Robert Picardo. Joe Dante, I believe... Yeah, yeah, he directed this, right? Yeah. Um, you got Unleashing the Beast, The Making of, Howling, multi-part documentary, amazing documentary. I watched that. You get deleted scenes and outtakes. You get The Making of a Monster Inside the Howling documentary. You get Horror's Hollowed Grounds, which is really cool, watching him go find all that stuff, photo gallery and trailers. Another one I really recommend, my favorite werewolf film besides Teen Wolf. Okay? <laughs> yep, I said it. Got a problem with it? Want to fight about it? No, I'm just fine. All right. Next up, we have one that um, is Shout Factory, actually. But it's 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 a must-own. Chuck Norris in Invasion USA. Look at that cover. So glad they're releasing these Chuck Norris cheese fests. I need to get Braddock, Mission in Action 3. Mission in Action 3. Um, that cool artwork and just amazing. Chuck Norris, classic. Um, haven't even watched it in a while. I haven't watched the Blu-ray, but I, I, I've seen it before. This is from 1985. You got a commentary by Joseph Zito and interviews with the writer, special effects artist, and uh, Greg Nicotero and Tom Savini, this makeup artist here on this. So classic there, and that is Invasion USA with Chucky e. Norris, baby. We're getting there. We're pushing through. We're trying to get through them. Next up is The Legacy. Really cool artwork there on the front. This is from 1978, starring Sam Elliott um, and Catherine Ross. This is a pretty creepy movie. I watched it about two weeks ago, right after I got it. Um, it it's creepy. It takes place in the in the in the UK, and um, they have a car accident in the English countryside. The other driver offers to take them to the lavish country estate. Once there, stuff starts happening. Yeah. Um, you get a high, you get the good, a good transfer on it. You get an interview with the special effects artist Robin Grantham. A theatrical trailer, TV spot, still gallery. Cool artwork there. I'm a, I'm a fan of Sam Elliott's acting too. He's he does he's got some good acting chops there. And there's the disc art. There's slightly alternate artwork on the front. Um, and that is the legacy. Moving along, we've got Leviathan. Have not watched this one yet, but I heard it's a great creature feature. Um, I had to switch out the case because when I got this and from BestBuy.com, the case was case the case was completely crushed, so I had to switch it out for one of my spare cases. Um, and there's the front, and there's the back, and then it's got that really cool disc art there, and then the alternate artwork, which is cool itself. Um, just heard great things about this one. Had to get this one. You got an interview with Hector El, uh, Elizondo and creature effects artists Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff Jr. This is from 1989. Really look forward to it. Um, you get uh, Peter Weller, Daniel Stern, Ernie Hudson. So there you go. That's Leviathan. Next up, we've got one of the hardest slipcovers ever to find. That's the and this is one of the only ones I don't have. That's Life Force. Now, technically, I believe there was a collector's edition, and then they quit putting that one out and just put out the combo pack that was missing a couple of features. And then when they did that, apparently that's when the slip covers were harder to find. I can't. If y'all if y'all can get a hold of us of a Life Force slip cover, let me know. I'll do a trade with you or something. If y'all got an extra one or know somebody, I really would like to have that slip for this one. Toby Hooper film from 1985. Really weird, weird ass movie, but I enjoyed it. Um, commentary with the director Toby Hooper. You got commentary with the makeup effects artist Nick Maley. Interviews with the cast and crew, uh, as well as the director Toby Hooper, and you got the trailer and all that. And there's the artwork there, and you crack it open, and it's got the Blu-ray and DVD, and then there's the alternate artwork. 
So yeah, that's Life Force. Again, slip cover needed for that one for old Chad. Next up, we've got Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions, which I have not watched yet. I know, I know, I know. I don't have enough time in the day to watch all these Scream Factors, okay? Okay, awesome artwork there. I got this off eBay about a year and a half ago from 1995. Really cool artwork. You take that slip cover off, you get an even cooler alternate artwork, I think. Or, well, original artwork there. Crack that open. It's, it's, it's the director's cut and the theatrical cut, which is cool. And then, of course, the newly commissioned there. Heard good things about this one as well. Just one I haven't got a chance to get and look around and watch. Um, again, from 1995, you got a disc one's just the theatrical cut. And then disc two, you've got the HD transfer of the director's cut approved by Cop, uh, Clive Barker. You get a commentary from him. You get a gathering of magic, magic featurette. You get behind the scenes footage, deleted scenes, interviews, photo galleries, all that good stuff. So this will be a good watch, I'm sure. That's Lord of Illusion. I'm a fan of Clive Barker. So next up is a good, good cheese fest here. We got Mad Max, which they you can still pick up at Best Buys and stuff like that. They actually got a, a, a nationwide brick and mortar release. Uh, luckily, um, awesome artwork. You know they put this out right around the time that. Fury Road was was popping, and then you take that slip off, and you got that amazing old school artwork. This is from 1980. Open it up, and then you get an even different artwork on the inside. Kind of got the similar treatment that um, Escape from New York got. You get interviews with Mel Gibson, um, Joan Sa Joanne Samuel, and director of photography. You get a commentary with the art director, the director of photography, special effects artist, etc. You get Mel Gibson, the rebirth of a, or the birth of a superstar. Uh, Mad Max, the film phenomenon. You get trailers, TV spots, and all that cool stuff. Must own there, Mad Max. Next is one I picked up at Great Escape um, when me and Skeggs and uh, Tony was doing our Alski and Abowski. Six dollars, um, and anytime I can find a Scream Factory for six dollars, I'm going to get it. That is the Monkey's Paw. I don't know anything about this movie. I haven't watched it. Haven't watched a trailer, anything. It's from 2013. It's got terrible reviews, but uh, again, whatever. This is a Chiller Films and Scream Factory collab. Um, you got that there, and then, of course, the same artwork on the disc. And then that creepy-ass part there on the inside. It's got a commentary with the director, Brett Simmons, and the cinematographer, Scott Wing, and actor, C.J. Thomason. You get a look behind the scenes and a trailer. So that's the monkey's paw. Next is one that's so much fun. And um, it takes all kinds of critters to make Farmer, Farmer Vincent's fritters. Sorry. And that is Motel Hill. Amazing, amazing movie. In the, in the same realm as Texas Chainsaw, just a really fucked up family that cuts people up. That awesome, awesome artwork. My second favorite slipcover art other than Day of the Dead. And then you get the original artwork there, which is really cool. And this is a combo de doo -dah there for you. Different artwork on each, which is always fun. And then, of course, the newly commissioned there. They did a really good job with this movie. Um, the transfer is great. Um, it's from 1980. You get um, special features. You get a commentary with the director, Kevin Connor. You get interviews with Kevin Connor and the producer, the writer, a couple of the actors and actresses, and interviews with the actors and actresses as well. Um, Ida Be Thy Name, a look back at Motel Hell's frightful female protagonist Ida Smith who is a crazy old woman she was an old bat in this movie uh, and you get the trailer so fun fun stuff Motel Hill is always a good time definitely recommend that one continuing on we've got The Nest which is a great creature feature about a huge ass cockroaches got this at CD Warehouse for $9 something like that um, this is from 1988 Get a commentary with the director, Terrence Winkless. That cover's amazing. Then you crack it open. You got the combo pack there with the Blu-ray and the DVD. And then you've got, you know, you got a little scene from the movie there. Just good fun. I, I'm a huge fan of Creature Features. I say that all the time, but the more I watch them, the more I fan I am and trying to grab all of them. And that is The Nest. Next is one I kind of wish I would have grabbed that $70 set at the time because now it's impossible to find. It's like 300 bucks. But this is fine. This is Nightbreed, the director's cut. 
amazing movie. Blu-ray DVD combo pack. That slip cover is amazing. Got this off Amazon um, back in August of 14 or September of 14 when it came out. That amazing slip cover. And then you get the original art, which I always remember seeing. And it always scared the hell out of me when I would go to the video store. Um, you get Craig Scheffler, you know, the same guy that played Uncle Keith in One Tree Hill. That's right. I used to watch One Tree Hill. I'm a fucking gangster. Oh, not really. Um, and also played the quarterback in the program. Awesome artwork there on the disc. And then you got the newly commissioned on the inside, like always. And let's see what we got here for features, because there's a lot. There's so many. Um, this came out. 1990. Now you got an eight. You got a transfer. And you got an HD transfer. You get the director's cut with over 40 minutes of footage. Now I never saw this movie until I bought it. I never watched it as a kid growing up. So I watched the director's cut and it was amazing. I, 40 minutes of different footage. They said it's almost a completely different movie. So next, I need to watch the other one to kind of see the differences. Um, you get an introduction by the writer director Clive Barker again. Clive Barker film. You get a commentary with restoration producer Mark Allen Miller. You get interviews with the actors Craig Sheffer, um, Ann Bobby, Doug Bradley, Hugh Ross, uh, a lot of them. Uh, makeup's, makeup artists and all that stuff. You get a trailer. So really, really awesome set. Definitely wish I could have picked up that big box set, but it's not It's not that it had much, much more. It's just now that it's so hard to find. It was a limited thing. So that is Nightbreed, the director's cut. Ooh, I got to give me a drink. I'll be back. Sorry about that, guys. We're really powering through this. This is the longest video I'm ever going to do. Um, moving right along. Night of the Demons. Amazing release. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite releases from Scream Factory. Definitely in my top five. Definitely another one that I say, when you're going to start your Scream Factory collection, make sure you grab this bad boy. Amazing artwork. This slip cover is incredible. One of the best slips they've got. It's, it's uh, glossy. It's like an embossed slip cover, really cool. Great commissioned artwork there. And then you've got the original artwork, which is super creepy. There's the back there. This is from 1988. This is a combo pack, so you got the Blu-ray DVD there. And then, of course, the artwork on the inside. Just a great movie. Just such a fun, a fun, like a fun ride. You got super over-the-top gore, super cheesy like acting. You get naked chicks. You get all of it. You get all of it. Look at that on the back. That is amazing. You get a commentary with the director, Kevin Tenney, and the actors and cast and crew. You also get a second commentary with the director, Kevin Tenney, and the, and the producers. Um, you get an interview with cast and crew, including Lene Quigley, the Scream Queen. You get a promo reel, a video trailer, a theatrical trailer, TV and radio spots. Again, this is from 1988, and that is Night of the Demons. Couldn't recommend that one more. Moving on, we've got the two-pack of The Outing, a.k.a. The Lamp, and The Godsend. Outstanding two-pack. The Outing was super fun. So much fun. It's just about a magic lamp, like an Aladdin lamp. And from years and years ago, and somehow it comes into this museum, these kids go to a museum, and it just wrecks havoc. Um, the Godsend's good, too. It's about a, a woman that comes, a really weird woman that comes to visit these, or that meets these people, they, they invite her in the home to have dinner, she's pregnant, she all of a sudden has the baby there and then she just leaves when they're asleep or something, it's really weird, and the baby turns out to be a psychopath, um, but yeah, really fun, from 1980 was uh, the godsend, 87 was the outing, it was that awesome poster art there, um, so yeah, great two-pack, definitely recommend that one. Continuing on, we've got The People Under the Stairs from good old Wes Craven. Great collector's edition. Amazing slip cover there. Uh, this is from 1991. And there's the slip. And, of course, this was already on Blu-ray before, but they gave it a great, a much better release. That awesome artwork there. Open it up. Kind of glad they kind of got rid of the combo packs. I'm not, I don't really have any use for the DVDs. Um, I mean, I guess they're good to have, but... But um, chocked full of features as well. You got a commentary with Wes Craven, which is always cool when Wes Craven or John Carpenter do commentary on their movies because they're such geniuses. It's always cool to hear what they were thinking, you know, when they were making stuff. Get a commentary with the stars, Brandon Adams, A.J. Langer, uh, Sean Whalen, and uh, Jan Birch. Housemother, an interview with star Wendy Roby. 
What Lies Beneath, Interviews with the Makeup Effects Artist, Greg Nicotero, awesome. House of Horrors, an interview with the director of photography, Sandy Sissel. Setting the score, an interview with the composer, behind the scenes footage, a trailer, just chock full of stuff. Another one I really recommend, that is People Under the Stairs, baby. Moving along, we got Phantasm 2, which I picked up through BestBuy.com, and somehow I was lucky enough to snag the slipcover, which Outlaw said is super hard to find, so I'm really glad of that. I've never even seen it. I need. I want to snag the Phantasm 1, but that it's only on DVD, and even it's out of print. So um, I'm going to try to hold off on this one until I see the first one, but that artwork is amazing, and then that's amazing as well. Super creepy. This is from 1988. Another another one from 88. There, you get um, you get that cool disc art as well. Um, and you got a commentary with the director, Don uh, Casarelli. Actor is Angus Scrim and Reggie Bannister. Angus. You got an interview with the director, Don uh, Casarelli, um, and the actors and actresses. You get a trailer and more. It's Phantasm 2. Moving along. This is a Shout Factory release. And this is the original Piranha, which I've seen, and I enjoyed it. Um, I like the remakes are okay, too. But you can't beat a Roger Corman cult classic here with this one. And it's got this awesome artwork there. You open it up. This is one of the first Shout Factory releases, too, I believe. Get that cool little book. I found this at um, McKay's for like $6 one time. Um... Well, we're continuing. It is about six hours later. Um, my phone just was, a, it kept going in and out of battery, you know, go about, about to be going out on it. It was freezing up. It was irritating me. So I just said, you know what, let's just take some time off. Okay. So what we were at, we were at Piranha. Okay. Now Piranha is Roger Corman cult classic, as it says there. Um, just a fun creature film. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's Jaws similar to Jaws, um, and it's from Joe Dante, actually, um, who brought you um, Inner Space, he brought you Burbs, he brought you, uh, what'd he bring you, what'd he bring you, what'd he bring you, Howling, sorry guys, it's been a long day, great movie, um, you get a, of course it's the widescreen transfer, you get a commentary with the director, Joe Dante, and the producer, a making of featurette with new interviews with Roger Corman, Joe Dante, etc. You get bloopers and outtakes. You get a Piranha trailer with commentary. You get still galleries, all that good stuff. And again, there's the artwork. The disc, the disc art inside is is similar, um, but I like the other one better. And that is Piranha. By God, we're getting through them. We are getting through them, everybody. Next up, we've got a, a John Carpenter, another one of his greats, and that's Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness is great. Um, that, krill, that, krill, that, krill, that crazy looking cool slip cover. And then you take the slip off, you got that alternate um, original artwork, and then of course, different artwork on the disc, which is always fun. Um, just a good movie. Nobody ever really talks about this, this uh, John Carpenter film, but it's from 1987. Again, another great year for horror films. You get a commentary with the director, Joe, uh, John Carpenter, of course. You get interviews with the director and uh, Alice Cooper, who makes a cameo, and then you get a theatrical trailer. Another one I definitely recommend, and that slipcover is amazing, that is Prince of Darkness. Continuing on, we've got Prison, which is a fun, fun movie with Viggo Mortensen. That really cool slip. I don't know how rare these are, but uh, there's the alternate artwork. And you crack that open, and it's the Blu-ray DVD combo, and it's got even different art on the disc. That's why Screen Factory's the best, everybody. I'm guessing this video is probably gonna end up being about two and a half hours. But hey, one in Rome, 1988, Prison came out. Um, just a good uh, Rennie Harlan directed it. Um, you get a commentary with him. You get a hard time making of prison retrospective direct, uh, documentary with interviews with tons of people, including the stunt coordinator, Kane Hodder, which is awesome. Um, you get a poster and still gallery, an original first draft screenplay. 
That's prison. Next up is one that's very, very rare, the slip is at least, and that is Psycho 2. I haven't even watched this one yet. Um, big fan of the first one. Um, this is from 1983. Of course, you got Anthony Perkins, 22 years later. And um, just heard great things about it. Got it in one of those Screen Factory lots. The only thing about my slip cover, I do have a slip. When I got it from Amazon, it was torn right there. But it is what it is. Uh, take that off. Take the slip off there. You're going to have just, they don't have alternate artwork on these. You got the disc, and then you got some shots from inside from the movie there. And again, from 1983, you get a commentary with screenwriter Tom Holland. You get a vintage video and audio interviews with Anthony Perkins, Vera Miles, and the director Richard Franklin. You get a trailer and a TV spot. Um, they're making part four uh, as well. Or they're coming out with part four through Screen Factory. I don't think it'll be a collector's edition, um, but it's still going to come out, so that'll be cool. Next up, we've got Psycho 3. Another one I got with the slip. And, of course, same artwork on the actual movie. And disc art's the same as well. And then, of course, more shots from the film. This one was from 1983 also. I don't know how that worked. They shot them one after the other, or they just came out the same year. I'm not exactly sure how that happened. But you get a commentary with the screenwriter, Charles Edward Pogue. You get an interview with the actors. Um... And the makeup artist, and then you get a trailer. This is from 1983. Again, like I said, that's Psycho 3. I'm trying to kind of pick up the pace a little bit because it's getting late and it's just been a long video. Um, next up is one that I just absolutely adore, and that is Pumpkinhead. That slipcover is freaking insane. Insane, insane. Um, this is from 1988. Uh, There's that artwork, and then you take that off, and then you got the original Pumpkinhead artwork which is cool and then you get even different artwork on the disc um, let's see you get a tribute to Stan Winston featuring the actors uh, Lance Hedrick, uh, Hendrickson and, and, and more you get interviews with the producer and the actors you get a commentary by the screenwriter Gary uh, Girani and the creature graphic effects um, creator you get, special, uh, you get six featurettes you get behind the scenes footage and a theatrical trailer. So just chock full of stuff. This is another one I definitely recommend. Kramer's even given his bark of approval. That is Pumpkinhead. And then of course, you can't have Pumpkinhead without Pumpkinhead 2. Well, actually you can. Uh, this is the Blood Wings. Not that great of a sequel. It came out um, 11 years later, six years later. Um, it's not bad. It's just, it's just one of those that's not ever gonna top the original. The artwork's really cool though. And then there's the disc art, and then you get, oh, dope. I may switch it to that. That's dope. I didn't even notice that. Pumpkinhead 2. Um, you get an interview with the director, Jeff Burr, recreating the monster. You get interviews with the special effects artist. Um, so, yeah, that's Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings. Continuing on. We're just pushing through. We're almost done. We are in the S's, ladies and gentlemen. And within, and we got scarecrows. Um, one, me and Jordan really enjoy. This is this is from 1988 as well. So that 87, 88 were good years too. Um, of course, disc art, and then this artwork is a little is pretty much the same, just a little bit different shot there from the scarecrow. I enjoyed this one. Um, nobody ever really talks about this one, but I really like it. You get um, you get a commentary with the screenwriter Richard Jeffries. You get a, um, and also the director of photography and composer. You get a separate commentary with the director, William Wesley, and the producer. You get The Last Straw, which is an interview with the makeup effects creator, which is always cool seeing that stuff, you know. You get uh, Cornfield Commando, an interview with the actor, Ted Vernon, storyboard, still gallery, trailer, all that jazz, baby. This is Scarecrows. Next up, we've got one that I haven't watched yet. 1977 I picked it up at Hastings and that is the Sentinel heard it's just super creepy got that cool disc art and then looks like you get a shot from the movie which is really creepy looking excuse me this one's got commentary with the writer producer Jeffrey Conant uh, Convents I guess that's how you say it 
commentary with the writer, producer, director Michael Winter. You also get another, you get three commentaries. The third one has the actress uh, Christina Raines. You get an interview with the assistant director, and you get a trailer and galleries. So they were all about some commentaries for Sentinel, and it's another one that I've heard good things about. Um, let's see, you get um, you get Beverly D'Angelo's in it, Jeff Goldblum, Tom Berenger, Christopher Walken, John Carradine, Burgess Meredith. It's a lot, a lot of big, big actors in, in the early on stages of their career there. Sentinel, and after that. We've got another Wes Craven. You got Secret in the uh, Secret, Serpent in the Rainbow, baby. Outstanding movie, actually. Well, no, outstanding slipcover. The movie's good. It's just not my my bag, really. I'm not really into voodoo and stuff like that, but I still enjoyed the movie. Ooh. And uh, there's the alternate artwork with Bill Pullman there. This is from 1987. I'm telling you. Get a commentary with the actor Bill Pullman. You get Making of Serpent in the Rainbow featuring new interviews with actor Bill Pullman. Wade Davis, director of photography, special effects creator. Um, you get a trailer and a still gallery. And um, I'll show you the disc here. Get the disc. And then Screen Factory actually included an insert of like some of their titles, which they never ever do, which is kind of cool if they're doing that now. I don't know if they're going to keep doing it, but hopefully they will. That is Serpent in the Rainbow. The slip is almost worth the price of admission on that one. Now here's one that's very, 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 very bad. Very bad. Um, and that is Shark and Saw, Women's Prison Massacre. I knew this was going to be bad when I bought it. I'm a big fan of really cheesy stuff like this. But I was thinking, Women's Prison Massacre, you're going to see nudity. <clears throat> you're going to see extremely ridiculous gore and kills like you would in Sharknado. You didn't get any of that in this. You didn't get any. You didn't get any boobage, which is one downer. But I could live without the boobage. I see boobage in a lot of other movies, but it didn't really show any kills. And it, I mean, it, the acting was god awful. But it's probably the worst one I own in the collection. But uh, I'm still keeping it, of course. But um, yeah, <clears throat> get that disc art, and there's a shot of all the chicks that don't get nude in the movie, which is always awesome. So yeah, there's the Shark and Saw Women's Prison Massacre. Can't recommend that one at all. <clears throat> Next up, we've got another Wes Craven classic, Shaka. Now a lot of people, this is a love or hate thing, okay? Now I love this movie. A lot of people hate it. Uh, I got this from Viz. Viz didn't like it, but I really enjoyed it. This artwork is amazing. He also gave me the poster that I'll be getting a frame for soon and putting in the room. Then you get that infamous old school artwork there, which I always remember at the video store. Um, classic right there. This has got the this has got a feel like it's trying to be a little knockoff of Nightmare Nightmare on Elm Street kind of parts, which is fine because it's it's Wes Craven. So this is from 1988, 1989. Sorry, and it's chock full too. You get a commentary with the writer director Wes Craven, commentary with the director of photography, all new interviews with actor Mitch Plegi, Plegi, um, and some of the other actors. You get No More Mr. Nice Guy, the music of Shocker. A trailer, radio spots, interview, vintage interviews, and still gallery. So, I enjoyed this one a lot. A lot of people, it's a love or hate thing, but I loved it. And that's shocker. Continuing on, we are trucking through Slumber Party Massacre, baby. Woo! This showed some boobage. Um, this is a massacre, a Slumber Party Massacre done right. 1982. Um, very simple. You know, get the same artwork. And it looks like you get some shots from the movie. Uh, this, min this movie's 77 minutes long, and it's just, it's just to the point. There's a killer, and he's using a drill bit to kill people, to kill the girls with, and it's it's crazy. Um, but it's good fun, and you get a good. It's a good transfer of it. You get a Sleepless Nights, which is the making of Slumber Party Massacre. And you also get a commentary with the director Amy Holden Jones and some of the actors in it in a trailer. So that's Slumber Party Massacre. I also need to get uh, the sequel. The Screen Factory released. I gotta get a swig of Melly Yellow real quick. Golly! Woo! Alrighty. Continuing on, another creature feature. Just watched this one the other day. It was amazing. And that is Squirm. Squirm is from 1976. And it is a cheese fest. 
some of the worst country accents you've ever heard. But I love it. It's just about big ass worms that bite. And this artwork right there is amazing. And then you get that same artwork on the disc. And then, of course, newly commissioned there for you, baby. Woo! You get a commentary with the writer director Jeff Lieberman. You get interviews with Jeff Lieberman as well as some of the actors. You get a tour of the locations with Jeff Lieberman. You get a trailer, radio spots, TV spots, and a still gallery. Another, if you're into creature features, I suggest Squirm. I enjoyed it a lot, uh. especially being from 1976. Keeping it moving. This is a Shout Factory release, and I'm so glad that I scored this because I loved it. Terry O'Quinn and the Stepfather. My buddy Skeggs was telling me I need to get this, I need to get this, and I finally did. And when I bought it, I didn't even know it was a Shout Factory release. Um, so, I'm trying to see what year this came out. I'm not sure. Mid to late 80s. And a great movie. And of course, you get disc art, and you get a little cool, little small booklet there, and a shot from the movie. Um, but I could, this is a great, just a great, uh, I guess you could say th slasher maybe. I mean, it's, he just, stepfather's crazy. He just kills people. You know, you get a commentary with the director, Joseph Rubin. You get a stepfather chronicles, which is all new interviews. You get trailers for all three films and a still gallery. So that's stepfather. I need to get those sequels too. I think they're just on DVD though. Next up, we've got the sleepaway camp trilogy. We've got sleepaway camp one here, with the amazing slip cover. And that alternate artwork. I freaking love this trilogy. I posted a picture on my Instagram about it. I was watching them earlier today. Uh, they're so good. Just some of the best cheese you could ever get a, get a hold of. It's like fondue. It's just horror movie fondue. This is from 1983. You get a 2K scan of the film, which it looks amazing. Um, you get commentary with stars Felisa Rose and Jonathan Tiersten. You get an original commentary with the director-writer Robert Hutzik, Hiltzik. Um, you get interviews with the cast and crew. You get Sleepaway Camp Scrapbook, a short film Judy by Jeff Haynes, and you also get a theatrical trailer. Uh, absolutely love this. This is another trilogy. This is a trilogy that I definitely recommend you get. That's Sleepaway Camp 1. Well, you know what's got to follow that up, and that is Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers. And uh, it just gets cheesier each time. The acting gets worse. The kills get more ridiculous, and there's that awesome, awesome alternate artwork there. You crack this bad boy open, and you got you a combo de doo -dah there. Um, this one was done in 87, so four years later. And the cool thing about it is, by the way, before I, get it, I, I need this, the poster to Sleepaway Camp 1. If anybody's got that and would like to trade it, um, let me know, or maybe possibly sell it. I've got Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3, I just need that first one. So if anybody's got a poster for Sleepaway Camp 1 and they're wanting to get rid of it, let your boy know. Um, you got a commentary with the director, Michael Simpson, on this one. You get some behind-the-scenes footage with commentary by the director. You get a tale of two sequels. You get the part one uh, documentary, Back to Camp, but featuring the director and some of the actors. Um, you get a pro video promo trailer and more. They chalk these full of features. They did such a good job with the Sleepaway Camps. That was Sleepaway Camp 2. And then rounding out the trilogy, you've got Sleepaway Camp 3, Teenage Wasteland, which is an awesome, awesome artwork. And then, of course, this amazing uh, artwork there, alternate status. Uh, this is from 1988, so they, they pumped this one out the year after. You get a, oh, let me see. I can't forget the disc art, Chad. What kind of person are you? Whammy. Blu-ray DVD combody, combody doo da day. Um, get a commentary with the director again, Michael Simpson. You get a behind-the-scenes footage. You get Tell Two Sequels Part Two, with interviews with the actors and crew. Um, you get trailers, news promo, deleted gore footage, and more. So, really cool, man. Definitely recommend the whole trilogy if you can get it at a good price. And I know that slipcover for uh, Sleepaway Camp One is hard to find. So, I know the homie Tony. I think uh, Friday the 14th is looking for that slip. If anybody knows anything. And here's one I need the slip for as well, and that is Eli Roth Presents The Stranger. This is an IFC Midnight Scream Factory collabo. 
Um, haven't got a chance to watch this one yet. I got it at Hastings. Um, it's supposed to be like a vampire film, I believe. Slightly different artwork on the ins on the inside there. This is from 2014. You get a Welcome to Chiliwood or yeah, Chiliwood uh, featurette. You get a short film, The Fourth Horseman. You get a trailer and a Chili trailer as well as U.S. trailer. So that is The Stranger. Eli Roth presents. Next up, we've got another IFC Midnight Scream Factory release, a, a creature feature that I just freaking enjoyed like no other, and that is Stung. Just about some ridiculous bumblebee wasp kind of deals, and uh, it was a, it was a it was a fun ride there. That awesome artwork, an awesome interior or the alternate, and there's the disc art there. This is just great. I mean, just ridiculous gore. Um, the dialogue was good. It was written well. The actors that they got were good. I enjoyed it a lot. I like. Hopefully, they'll make a sequel. Um, you get a commentary with the director, Benny Diaz, and the producer Benjamin Munns. You get a making of featurette. You get production blog videos, and you get a trailer. So that is stung. Check that one out if y'all like creature features. Moving along, we've got Swamp Thing, which is a Mac Chill Out, which is a Wes Craven film. I forgot all about that. Um, this is the Blu-ray DVD combo de doodah there for you, and there's that ridiculous art, you know, stuff in the movie. Haven't seen this in years, years, years. Um, 1982. You get a commentary with Wes Craven. You get a commentary with the makeup effects artist, as well as interviews with Adrian Barbeau, Swamp Thing creator Lynn Wine, and actor Reggie Batts. You get a trailer and photo galleries. Um, it's another Wes Craven one, man. They need, they need, they need to put out an ultimate collection for Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't know how difficult that'll be, but they need to make that happen. That needs to be put out. Next up, we've got the two Tales from the Crypt films. you got Tales from the Crypt Presents Demon Knight with Billy Zane, man. You get that awesome artwork and then the original artwork there. Um, just such a fun movie. And then you get that cool disc art. Um, this one is full, full, full of features, man. Um, this is the better of the two to me. I like this one better than Bordello of Blood. Um, came out in 95. You get a commentary with the director, Ernest Dickerson. You get a second commentary with the special effects creator. And you get an under siege making of Demon Knight featuring interviews with the cast and crew. You get panel discussion from the American uh, Film Festival here, it looks like, featuring the director, Ernest Dickerson, and actor Dick Miller. You get a st uh, still gallery and a trailer. Um, another fun one, that is Tales from the Crypt Presents Demon Knight. And the second of the two, the lesser of the two in my opinion, Tales from the Crypt Presents Bordello of Blood with Dennis Miller, uh, Erica Elianak, Angie Everhart, and Corey Feldman. You get to see the Feld Dog as a vampire, which is fun. Um, there's the artwork, awesome artwork, and then of course the original. And you get that disc art. Of course, of course, of course. This one came out same year, '95. Um, this one doesn't have as many com uh, as many features. You do get a commentary with the writer and producer. You get Tainted Blood, a making of featurette with interviews from the cast and crew, and then you get a still gallery and a trailer. So, I I'm gonna I collect them all. So I'm gonna say get them all if you want, but. If you had to pick between the two, I would go with Demon Knight, but that's not knocking Wardell of Blood. It's a good movie. So continuing with Tales in the Crypt, we got the double feature of Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. Two horror anthologies. Tales from the Crypt I really enjoy. Vault of Horror I haven't watched yet. Um, Tales from the Crypt was 1972, and the Vault of Horror was 1973. So two mid early 70s uh, horror anthologies, which is cool. Get that... Uh, this one is, is different because you get a Blu-ray with both of the films on it, the, the uncut version and, of Vault of Horror, and then you get a disc that's standalone with a theatrical cut of uh, Vault of Horror. So, um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any special features. So, Tales from the Crypt, I really enjoy. Like I said, Vault of Horror, I haven't watched yet. So, there's that one. We're almost done. We just got a handful left. We're powering through. Whammy, Terror Train, baby. Woo! Good old Jamie Lee Curtis. That awesome slipcover, which I think is pretty rare now. And then you get that cool original artwork there. It's the old combo de doodah there. Blu-ray DVD. 
this one is from 1980. This is one of the older ones that Jamie Lee Curtis was in. Um, same year as Fog. Um, you get an interview with the production uh, executive Don Carmody and the producer, production designer. Um, you get trailer, TV spot, still gallery. Not really a whole lot of stuff. Was hoping they could have had some kind of Jamie Lee Curtis interview, but I know she's probably busy and didn't have time to do it. But whoa, look at that catch, baby. Terror Train. Definitely recommend that one as well. And a super cheese fest of a, t a double feature, Terror Vision and Video Dead. Terror Vision, it, it, I can't even explain how cheesy it is, but it's, it's, it's lovely. And this one, you get the double feature on the Blu-ray disc and then a double feature on the DVD disc, which I thought was very cool. And then you get tons of special artwork in there. Um... And you get tons of features. Uh, Terror Vision was 86. Video Dead was 87. Terror Vision gives you a commentary with the director, Ted uh, Nicolau, and the actors. Uh, Monster on Demand, which is the making of Terror Vision, a retrospective documentary with tons of interviews. You get a poster and still gallery. Um, on Video Dead, which Video Dead was a cheese fest too. Zombies uh, just coming out of the television set. It was ridiculous. Audio commentary with the writer-director, uh, Robert Scott. You also get a commentary with uh, the actors and actresses in the film. You get um, pre-record uh, pre pre dead, which is an interview with the makeup effects artist. Um, behind the scenes, still gallery, photo, still gallery. So, great double feature there. Cheese fast, terror vision, video dead. What's next? Oh, my favorite, favorite, favorite Screen Factory release. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, baby. Woo! Uh, amazing, amazing movie. My, Oh, man, my favorite Screen Factory release and my favorite artwork ever. So glad I got the poster for this. Um, I wish I could get the poster for this. That's amazing. Um, they did such a great job with this movie. 1986, Kramer loves it. Disc 1 gives you the new 2K, uh, 2K scan of the film, which is amazing. You get a commentary with the director of photography and some of the other producers. You also get a commentary with the director, Toby Hooper. You get a commentary with actors Bill Mosley, Caroline Williams, and the makeup, uh, makeup creator, Tom Savini. And then Disc 2 gives you the original HD Master, which looks great as well. And then you got the House of Pain, an interview with the makeup artist. Um, Yuppie Me, which is an interview with the two actors in the car at the beginning of the movie. Uh, cutting, cutting Moments, which is the editor. That feature was kind of boring, but you get a Behind the Mask, an interview with the stuntman, Leatherface Bob Elmore. And then you get the Horrors Hollowed Grounds, which is really cool. He goes back to all the old spots. And then you get that 85-minute It Runs in the Family documentary that was already on the Blu-ray. You also get an alternate opening credit sequence, deleted scenes, and more. This is a must-own. If you said, Chad, what is the first Scream Factory I should buy? It would be Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Next up, oh my gosh, I got two things left to do. They Live, baby. Roddy Piper. Rest in peace. Such an amazing movie. Another John Carpenter classic. It's got that rare slip with the buy sticker. And then, of course, the original artwork. And then the old Blue Razy. Blue Razy? No, Chad. This is from 1988. Get a commentary with the director, John Carpenter, and Roddy Piper. Amazing commentary. Get an interview with the director, John Carpenter. You get the making of They Live. You get a trailer, a TV spot, and more. Another one of my favorites. I, I just so hope, I keep saying it over and over, but please, Scream Factory, release they, not, release the thing. Please release the thing on Blu-ray. It's already on Blu-ray, but Scream Factory, give it a release. That's They Live. Next, we've got The Town That Dreaded Sundown, which I enjoy this one. Um, it's a little slow. You get the. Um, you also get um, a DVD copy of the movie called The Evictors, which I haven't watched yet. And then um, there's the artwork from those. How much time we got? Twenty. Goodness gracious. Um, this one is from the Evictors or the house, the town that dreaded sundown is from 1977, and the Evictors is from 1979. You get an audio commentary with historian Jim Presley. You get an interview with actors and actresses. You get a trailer, and you get an essay. 
by a writer here in a poster and still gallery. Um, I enjoy it. Now, this is a slow burn. Um, it's, I, I can't recommend it to everybody, but I enjoyed it. If you're a hardcore horror fan, then you'll enjoy it. That was the town that dreaded sundown. Now, this is the best two-pack I own. I said it earlier when I was talking about Ghoulies. Troll and Troll 2. Oh, my God. Y'all have got to get this. Oh, my God. Troll 2. Best, worst movie that ever existed. Terrible. Terrible movie. Um, there you see there's the two-pack, and you get the awesome documentary, The Best, Worst Movie, um, which is a documentary that is, is so worth the $20. Um, Troll 1 was 1986 Troll 2 was 1991 uh, Troll 1 you get a making of Troll featuring the director John Carl Bushler you get, and the producer and writer um, you get a still gallery and you get a trailer also you get some Elaine Bennis and a bath towel in Troll 1 which is awesome Troll 2 you get the commentary with actors George Hardy and Deborah Reed and, but the, the documentary is so worth the $20 get this Troll 1, Troll 2 and the documentary Watch Troll 2. You ain't got to worry about watching Troll 1 right now. Just watch Troll 2. And then watch the documentary after. Parts of it are sad. I'm not going to lie. But then we follow that double feature up with this pile of shoo shoo. I love it though. Nicolas Cage cheese. You got Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage. And you get Steve Gutenberg in High Spirits. Come on now. There's the back. That was one I bought off Scream Factory that was, or off eBay that was, um, screener for somebody look at look at Nicolas Cage <laughs> shoo shoo um, you get commentary with the director Robert Bierman and actor Nicolas Cage in Vampire's Kiss which is awesome you get a trailer uh, Vampire's Kiss was 88 or 89 and High Spirits was 88 High Spirits doesn't have any features but uh, there's that one we've got five left Village of the Damned another John Carpenter Scream Factory release Gotta love it. That awesome artwork. And then the old school artwork. And then you crack it open. And then there's that. Can't say I enjoyed this as much as I was hoping. But I still did like it. Um, it's slow. It's from 1995. Kirstie Alley. Uh, Christopher Reeve. You get, um, and it takes a village. Making of Village of the Damned. Featuring tons of interviews with the actors and, and crew. And you get new Horse Hollowed Grounds. Revisiting the locations. Which is my favorite special features about those. You get the go-to guy, My Career with John Carpenter by Peter Jason. You get vintage interviews, trailers, behind-the-scenes gallery. Next up, we've got Without Warning. That is a 1980 film. I have not watched. It looks insane. It looks like the cover of a Scooby-Doo right here. It looks like it's about alien invasions, I'm guessing. Look at that ridiculous picture there. Um... You get audio commentary with the producer, director, Graydon Clark. You get interviews with the cinematographer, writers, and actors. You get a trailer. That is without warning. Next up, we've got Wormwood. Road of the Dead. Definitely, definitely recommend this one. Outlaw told me about it. It is, it is Mad Max and, Walk, and Walking Dead is what it is. That awesome slip. That awesome alternate artwork. Um, it's from 2015, you get a commentary with the Rogue, the Roach Turner brothers who directed the film. They did a great job. Crowdfunding videos, seven-minute teaser scenes, storyboards. Definitely recommend this one. That is Wormwood. Hopefully, it'll let me finish these. Next up, we've got Zombie Fight Club. <sighs> this is a really weird movie. I can't recommend it to everybody. I enjoyed it. It's, it, it's just, it's just weird. Very weird. A lot of CGI. I'm not a fan of CGI, man. I want to see some practical effects, gore and blood. It's got a uh, zombie fight club stunts and a trailer. I'd say pick it up if you like. I mean, if you like collecting them. <laughs> I can't really recommend it, though. And last but not least, we've got Zombie High. Have not watched this one yet. This is from 1987. There's absolutely no features on it. Shoo shoo on that. Um, but uh, it looks cool. It looks like good cheese. And. Yeah, that recommend that is it. That is all of my Scream Factory. That is my Scream Factory collection. It is ridiculous. Check it out, guys and gals. Hope y'all enjoyed it. There's the Halloween set as well. I've got to get all this put back on the shelf. Can't see y'all. I love y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for y'all's constant support. 
of that cha of my channel and I love each and every one of y'all. Love pizza and hair grease. Woo! Woo! WrestleManiac, aka Blu-ray Maniac. Olympody. We're here. Pardon my hair peekabooing out of the side of that hat there. What do you and your fat wife think of my new hat? Even though it's not a new hat, it's old as thick. We are here doing a little bit of a different um a little different angle for you. Using the webcam and doodah there. Just because I got a webcam and it's it's so much easier than my phone. My phone's better quality, but you know, shit yourself. Okay? Shit yourself. We are here to just talk about horror films. Because I love them. I fucking love them. And um that's what we're gonna do. Okay? So without further ado, give me one second. And I'll be back. I'll be back and we'll talk about some goddamn horror movies. 